David, in trying to understand the nature of physical law, what are the kinds of questions we should ask in order to get beneath this concept? There's a question that philosophers have been struggling with for a long time about what it is to be a law of nature. Mm -hmm. um, um, an immediate comment, um, a place to start such a discussion is to observe that the word law got into scientific terminology as a metaphor. Uh -huh, okay? uh -huh. The original use of the word had to do with civil law, okay? had to do with <laughs> laws governing sure. the proper conduct of society. Um, um, and, uh, and it had to do with religious notions of a sovereign of the universe, just as there was a sovereign of, uh, uh, of a given society and, uh, and so on and so forth. And um, a lot of people think that this confused the notion um, of natural law rather badly. So somebody says, why do electrons be behave the way they do? And somebody answers, well, it's a law that they do. <laughs> and if you take this seriously, the next question is going to be something like, you mean they're scared that if they don't behave this way, they'll be punished? And, and that's clearly not what you mean to say. It's been very difficult. So laws apparently refer to some kind of necessity that there is in the world. People talk about regularities. Uh, well, the question is, are they mere regularities or is there something that constrains them to be that way? So, and there, there, have been, there, there has been a long-standing debate in philosophy of science about two views of this, one of which wants to hold on to some idea that there's something besides the particular events themselves that, as it were, constrains the particular events to be the way they are, um, necessitates that the particular mm -hmm. events are the way they are. There's another line of thought, a much more skeptical line of thought, starting with the Scottish philosopher David Hume um, um, in the 18th century, um, that denies this, okay? And that says, the world is just one damn thing after <laughs> another, okay? And uh, that's an empirical uh, view. That, that, that's the that, only that, that's thing right. that you can view is, all, is what all you there, see. All there is are these facts. If we're lucky later on, we can come up with convenient, simple, informative summaries of mm -hmm. these facts mm -hmm. um, that, that help us say concisely what the world is like. But it's just those summaries that laws are. They're not anything distinct from the facts out there in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a debate that's been going on a long time. It's a debate that very much continues to this day. And it's a debate which every now and then has entered in fairly crucial ways into scientific practice. How itself. has that happened? Well, in particular, in, in investigating the foundations of statistical mechanics, there's been the statistical mechanics seems to require talking about a probability distribution over initial conditions of the universe. Um, it's been very hard for people with a, with a sort of metaphysically robust image of laws, with a kind of governance image of laws, um, to make sense of what it might mean for there to be a law stipulating a probability distribution over initial conditions of the universe. Because that law would seem to need to be a law about how those conditions came into being, but there wasn't any way that those conditions came into being. By definition. They were just the first, they, they were by definition the first things there were. Yeah. So how has these different positions affected real science? Well, for example, a very fundamental component of, of the physics of the 20th century is statistical mechanics, um, a, a, uh, 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 a science that grew up to explain the behaviors of systems consisting of very large numbers of elementary components, macroscopic physical objects, gases, uh, stuff, fluids, things like that. Um, statistical mechanics makes crucial use of probability distributions over possible initial states of the universe mm -hmm. as a whole. For people um, whose image of law uh, is, a, is one of the governance images, one of the metaphysically robust images. Necessity. Right. It's hard to imagine 
what a law stipulating a probability distribution over initial states of the universe could possibly be about, okay? Surely it's not about the probability that some prior event which gave rise to those initial conditions went this way or that way, because by, by definition, definition, there was no prior event. So making sense of these probabilities seems to require um, the more skeptical, the more deflationist, the more Jungian uh, uh, attitude towards what laws are as simply compact descriptions of what there is, mm -hmm. okay? Rather than something making claims about another metaphysical level of existence on which the ground level of what there is is being determined somehow. Does that put us on shaky ground, a bit of quicksand in terms of our appreciation of the stability of the universe? Well, um, look, we never had good arguments for the stability <laughs> of the universe. I mean, I mean, um, um, it's always been the case that we do the best we can and we make the simplest assumptions that we can and we get ourselves forward this way. Science is always an unfinished business. We can always find out tomorrow that all the laws that we thought applied up to this time turn out to be wrong. Um, um, it might make one sleep better if one has a myth in one's head about all this being determined by, by some relation among some other abstract category of things called laws somewhere up in a platonic heaven. Um, but but it, it, on my view, it turns out to be hard to see how that yep. really works and how these objects up in platonic heaven actually do constrain the behaviors of the particulars yep. down here. I'd like to sleep better, but I don't want to sleep better at the cost of making up some artificial right. reality. Right. So um, where, where do you come out? Where do you conclude? I'm, I'm much more, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I think almost everyone who grows up with a physics education um, grows up with a governance image of laws in their head. Um, I certainly came out of my physics education that way. But on being asked to reflect on this philosophically, on being asked to say clearly what it means, on being asked to say explicitly what this image in my head consists of, it's one of these things that as soon as you pick it up and start to examine it, very quickly falls apart in your hands. So. I experienced the loss of this metaphysical image as very poignant, but I don't know how to deny that it has been lost. I don't know how to deny that at the end of the day, when I pick this metaphysical image up in my hand, I don't know how to say what it is, and the minute I blow on it, it, it evaporates, it, it falls apart. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm in a place where I'm much more sympathetic to the Jungian view. This isn't so much because the Jungian view strikes me as what best captures my intuitions. It's because the Jungian view is at the end of the day, the only one that I feel like I understand, the only one that I feel like I know how to explain to myself.